This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 28, Manga at New York Comic Con. Is this a zombie finale? In the most recent issue of Monthly Dragon Age, it was revealed that the manga, Is This a Zombie?, which is based on a light novel series, will have its final chapter in the issue coming out in November. Yen Press has been publishing the series about a boy, a Yumu, who is killed and resurrected as a zombie, but who accidentally steals the powers from magical girl Haruna, who forces him to fight in her place, costume and all. The eighth volume was released in Japan in December, and Yen Press will release the fifth volume at the end of this month. I read the first chapter of this title and could barely make it through that. I think it's supposed to be a comedy, but it fell flat for me. Actually, I haven't found anyone who likes it. Millennium Snow Ends. Again. Hakusensha's Lala DX magazine announced in their November issue that Millennium Snow, a title that returned from hiatus after 10 years, will end in the December issue. The mangaka, Bisco Hattori, stopped working on the title when her other title, Orin High School Host Club, took off. She returned to Millennium Snow last year, and a third volume was published in August. Hopefully there will be enough for a second volume after that, and that Viz releases the continuation of the series. I was so thrilled when it was announced that the series would continue. I loved the first two volumes we got in 2007, and really wanted more. I'm just sad that it's only going to be a little more. Cross Manage, extra chapter published in Weekly Shonen Jump. Even though Cross Manage is done and gone, it's found a way to pop up one more time. In Japan, the extra chapter will publish in the autumn issue of Jump Next, and Viz will be publishing it in Weekly Shonen Jump the same week. The bonus chapter will focus on what happened over the summer between Sakurai and Misora, and will reveal the secret behind Misora's hairpin. I'm really disappointed this series didn't get to go longer. I was really enjoying the story and characters, and to think I only get another three volumes at most makes me sad. They really deserved more. Viz Manga Top 10 It's the rise of the new series as both new shonen and shoujo take over the list this week. Shonen is only able to take back one spot from shoujo, giving it the very slight advantage. Shonen retakes the number one spot with Bleach Volume 58. Rosario Vampire Season 2, Volume 12, comes in at number 2, and the first shoujo makes its appearance at number 3 with Blackbird, Volume 17. Nura, Rise of the Yokai Clan, Volume 17, comes in at number 4, and A Devil and Her Love Song, Volume 11, finishes out the top 5 at number 5. Dawn of the Arcana, also at Volume 11, comes in at number 6, which is followed by Claymore, Volume 23, at number 7. Beauty Pop Volume 9, the only completed series to make the list, comes in at number 8, which is followed by Case Closed Volume 46 at number 9, and Naruto Volume 62 continues to hang on to the list at number 10. As we usually see with new releases week, all of the new releases hit the top 10. On the print side, we see two of these titles make the New York Times bestseller list as well. For Shoujo, it's Blackbird Volume 17, and for Shonen, it's Bleach Volume 58. Both are titles I've tried and read for a while, but just couldn't keep me as a reader. I guess it shouldn't be of any surprise that Kodansha's Attack on Titan has five of the spots on the same list, taking not just three of the top five, but also the top two. I remember not so long ago when it was Viz taking the majority of the spots on the NYT list. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Should I give more coverage to the New York Times bestseller list? I don't because so many other podcasts and news sites already do. But if you'd like the same week-over-week analysis of the list here, leave me a comment and let me know. There was one new title added to the Viz Manga site. Aishi Tezura Baby is from the early days of Shoujo Beat. It's about Kippe Katakura, a 17-year-old playboy who ends up taking care of his 5-year-old cousin, Yuzuyu, who comes to live with his family after her mother mysteriously disappears. Taking care of Yuzuyu makes him realize what his playboy antics have done to all the girls he's been with. I remember reading the first chapter of this title in Shoujo Beat back in the day, and I also remember not being impressed with it. But that's just me. Manga at New York Comic Con New York Comic Con is the last big convention of the year for most publishers, so this is the last hurrah for license announcements. 
It also seems like publishers coasted through the summer and saved their licenses for this con. They didn't seem to have anywhere near the number of licenses for SDCC. Is SDCC losing its luster with manga publishers? Vertical starts out the landslide with a surprise light novel license. Most publishers see light novels as a plague, so it's surprising to see a boutique publisher like Vertical take them on until you see the subject. Attack on Titan Before the Fall is a new series with only three volumes out so far. It takes place 70 years before the original manga and follows Anheru, a member of the Survey Corps who, tired of seeing members die at the hands of the Titans, tries to come up with weapons to defeat him while the government is trying to shut them down. Vertical has been doing pretty well with related property titles, so hopefully they can ride this Titan bandwagon and do some cashing in. The first volume will be available in summer 2014. Vertical also announced their third Moyoko Ano title. In the close name Fat is a Jose one-shot. It is about Noko Hanazawa, an office worker who eats her troubles away. She puts up with bullying about her weight at work, but when she loses her boyfriend, she decides she has to lose weight by any means necessary. Ano is good at writing stories that portray young women in real-life situations. This shocking diet comic will probably be just that. It's worth checking out. This volume will be available in summer 2014 as well. Kodansha poured on the titles as well, even after a strong showing at SDCC, about the only publisher to do so. UQ Holder is a new title from Ken Akamatsu, the creator of Nagima, and takes place in the Nagima universe only many years later. The story follows Tota, a boy determined to leave his village and go to the city, but he must first defeat his teacher, the immortal Evangeline. I never got the appeal of Akamatsu's work. The whole harem thing never appealed to me, so I've passed on it. I'll probably pass on this one, too. The first volume will be out in spring 2014. The Seven Deadly Sins is also a new series that just started last year and already has four volumes out. It follows Princess Elizabeth, who, after the death of her father, the king, at the hands of the Holy Knights, goes out searching for the legendary warriors, the Seven Sins. The first one she finds is Meliodas, The Sin of Wrath. This title sounds more to my liking, and the art looks cute. I'm going to check this out when it's released in spring 2014. As the head of the Attack on Titan onslaught, it shouldn't come as any surprise that they have licensed several Attack on Titan spin-off gag manga. Attack on Titan Guidebooks, Inside and Out, is a huge tome that features behind-the-scenes material about the manga concept sketches, character profiles, and even papercraft. This one will be out in the summer of 2014. Attack on Titan Junior High is a comedy manga that reimagines the Titan cast at students and teachers at Titan Junior High School. Do I really need to say more? This one will be out in spring 2014. Just a few minutes ago, I talked about Vertical's license of the Attack on Titan prequel light novels. Kodansha covers the other side of that coin with the Attack on Titan Before the Fall manga. The Shonen series adapts the light novels into a manga series and just started in August. Kodansha expects to have the first volume in spring 2014. For those interested in the shoujo band to the series, there is Attack on Titan No Regrets. The spin-off centers on Captain Levy's past, including his first meeting with Commander Irwin and how he joined the Survey Corps. This title will start in Japan in November and will be available stateside by summer 2014. This media rolls out some new titles since all of their titles they've touted over the summer are finally being released. Terra for Mars is a 2011 title. Hundreds of years ago, scientists sent mold and cockroaches to Mars to terraform the planet. It is now 2577. A man travels to the red planet and discovers humanoid cockroaches that then kill them. So humanity sends elite warriors to wipe out the cockroaches. This title has an interesting premise and a sci-fi theme, but I don't know how interested I'll be in the violence. There are currently six volumes available in Japan. Ore Monogatari is a romantic comedy that follows the love triangle of unattractive Takeo Goda, his good-looking childhood friend, Sunagawa, and the object of their affections, Yamato, who likes to make candy. The series started as a one-shot and became serialized soon after. The series has potential, and some may be happy to hear the writer is Kazune Kawahara, creator of High School Debut. I'll check this one out. There are currently four volumes available in Japan. Black Rose Alice is a vampire manga from Satona Mizushiro, the creator of After School Nightmare. It centers around Dimitri, a tenor singer who miraculously survives an accident. One day after a rehearsal, his lover, theater manager, 
and members of the orchestra commit mass suicide, and Dimitri is confronted by a man named Maximilian, who tells Dimitri he is a vampire. Not feeling this one. Didn't care for after-school nightmare and getting burned out on the vampire thing. There are six volumes available in Japan. Time Killers is a one-volume collection of short stories by Kazue Kato, the creator of Blue Exorcist. It has 11 stories, including the pilot story for Blue Exorcist. I think this one might be interesting. Battle Royale, Angel's Border, is a one-volume story based in the Battle Royale universe and is written by the original author Koshun Takami. It focuses on the six girls holed up in the lighthouse. While Battle Royale is a good story, it's not my cup of tea. The last publisher to announce was Yen Press. Most of their titles are just what you would expect from Yen Press, though there were a few surprises. High School DXD is a fan service heavy series that follows lecherous Issei Hyodo, who is killed on his first date and is resurrected as a demon and becomes an underling to a demon who is also the prettiest girl in his new high school. This title is an adaptation of a light novel series by the same name. This one is probably going to be a pass. Demon from a Foreign Land is a Kaori Yuki title and a little surprise to see from Yen Press since up till now, Viz has been publishing all of her titles. It is a dark fantasy, as most Yuki titles are, and takes place in Japan's capital after a devastating earthquake. Quake orphan Sorato, who is taken in by Baron Kami Chika, is joined by the Baron's son, Garan, and Garan's fiancé, Kiora, who pledge an oath of eternal friendship, an oath that is tested by supernatural trials. Kaori Yuki is one of those creators that I will buy everything of, so this is a must-have. Ani Imo is a shoujo romantic comedy about a twin brother and sister who switch bodies. Yeah, not feeling this one. I don't go for a lot of romantic comedies and really don't care for the body switching shtick. I'll pass. He's My Only Vampire is another shoujo vampire title, obviously, and follows a vampire named Aki who saves a girl named Kana and makes her his subordinate. Aki is looking for the seven stigmatas to save his twin brother, and it so happens one of Kana's schoolmates has one. Not feeling this one either. See Vampire Reasons stated previously. These last three titles are from Kodansha and were published in its shoujo magazine Aria. I guess this gives an idea as to the types of manga Kodansha doesn't want to publish. Void's Enigmatic Mansion is a Korean digital manhwa and an adaptation of the novel by the same name. The description gives it a comeuppance feel, as tenants should be careful what they wish for. I love comeuppance titles, so I'll definitely want to check this one out. It will be published digitally every month, but Yen Pren doesn't mention how it will be available. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I hope it's not through Yen Plus. I just cancelled my subscription. The last license is Alice in the Country of Diamonds Wonderful Wonderful World Guidebook. It is a visual guidebook to the PSP game. It will include illustrations, character profiles, creator interviews, and manga. It is one of the few Alice in the Country of titles that Seven Seas didn't get. While I like Alice in the Country of, this title is really for the hardcore fan. That's a lot of titles coming out. Most will be available between spring and summer 2014. So save up that Christmas money. Or better yet, put these titles on pre-order when they become available. Publishers like that. It sounds like NYCC was a success. Maybe too much, as its attendance numbers reached SDCC size, and they are starting to see the same crowding issues. Publishers seem to like NYCC better, or were licenses just not approved until the fall, hence the windfall. Well, either way, it's going to be another rich year for manga readers. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at mangazanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.